Hello Peter, today we are going to be ranking all of the 45 Spider-Man characters from worst to best, that includes the villains and all the countless web slingers. Starting off with number 45, we have Spider-Man's biggest villain, Mary Jane. How many times does she cheat on poor Peter Parker and she does nothing special for Peter and nothing special in the game? Number 44, the symbiote scientists. Even though the animation for equipping their weapon is really slick, that does not save them from having no abilities, but they are pretty decent for just a goon. <clears throat> Surely you know the saying, with great power comes a fine looking Aunt May, it's Aunt May up next. Now I know what you're thinking, how can slapping people with handbags be better than the symbiote scientists? Well in Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2 they massively improved Aunt May. She can throw pies and do full on Spider-Man moves, now we know where he gets it from, all while listening to the absolute bop of a tune that is this. Scraping his gigantic forehead just above Aunt May is Hammerhead. I bet all of his dreams are in IMAX. <laughs> In terms of Spider-Man's coterie of supervillains, Hammerhead is very bland compared to the others. His charge-up attack is fun, bashing people with your giant forehead, but that's about all he does. For number 41, whatever you do, please do not ask him to be paid in advance. Yeah, it's J. Jonah Jameson being able to pull out a literal desk from your backside anytime, anywhere and shout... It's just hilarious. It is seriously probably the best sonar ability across all of the LEGO games. Fair enough, in the first LEGO Marvel game, all he can do is throw newspapers, but in the second one, they majorly improved him, and I think he is deserving of this spot. Now, next up at number 40, we have Green Goblin Ultimate, and I have never been a major fan of the Ultimate appearances for certain characters. Take Dr. Octopus, for example. Some of you guys may really like the appearance of Green Goblin Ultimate, but for me, he really does not feel like Green Goblin, and he is simply just a copy of Abomination. In the number 39th spot, we have the Sandman Goon. Now, I am a massive fan of Sandman in the first LEGO Marvel game, so how could I not love the Sandman Goon? He is basically a dumbed-down version of Sandman, being able to slide around and shoot stuff. It is so much fun. Sliding my way downtown, sliding fast, faces passing, I miss you, na -na 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 -na. Anyway, the only thing that pulls him down is his lack of abilities. I mean, he can sink through sand. At number 38, we have Spider Girl, and I really do not like this design. It kind of just looks like a randomly generated custom character. Also, this isn't even Spider Girl. This is the ultimate Spider Woman. I think the developers messed this up. Before we move on to who is at number 37, we all love Lego game bosses, so why not fight bosses on the go with today's sponsor, Dungeon Hunter 6. There are over 100 bosses to fight in this game and you can even make the bosses serve you. How cool is that? That's like having Carnum or Dr. Octopus as a pet. Plus, it has online multiplayer alongside PvE where you can battle in real-time guild wars in this incredible APRG. Oh, and did I forget to mention, in the late game, you can even transform into the bosses. If you are interested, come check out the link in the description and you will get a free starter pack worth $50 using the link. The game is free on Android and iOS and if you are watching on computer, scan this to get started started on your adventure and if you use your game account you can enter the launch lucky spin event for free win prizes like a ps5 and more starting october 15th anyway thank you so much dungeon hunter 6 Let's get back to it. In the 37th spot, we have another one of those bizarre Spider-Verse characters, Spider-UK. Who does not know about the Spider-Verse these days? And Spider-UK, with the clue in the name, is the United Kingdom Spider-Man. For the most part, I do think the design is pretty clever incorporating the Union Jack into the Spider-Man outfit, but it is just one of those Spider-Man variations I never see myself picking. At number 36, what do you get when Blob goes to the gym? you get Kingpin. <laughs> Obviously, it makes sense for Kingpin to be a big character. The dude's like 99% muscle, but then you face the problem of how he feels like all of the other big characters. He does have a gun that is disguised as a cane, which gives him that little bit more of an edge among the other big characters, but... I just think Kingpin's fine, there's not much more you can do to him to make him any better. At number 35, we have the Scarlet Spider. The vibrant blue hoodie stands out so well against the red, however, with the giant logo missing from the back, it just makes him look a little bland from behind. 
With this in mind, I decided to place the homemade suit above the Scarlet Spider at number 34 because I really love the lighter shade of blue here and the eye pieces are so different. And with this one being homemade, it kind of makes sense not to have a logo on the back and you can transform into Peter Parker with this outfit. Number 33, Arachnido Jr. This character costs 500,000 studs, I have no idea why. He does give off a purple streak, which no other Spider-Man character does while swinging, and as much as he looks really cool, he doesn't have anything to justify the price of 500,000 studs. Number 32 is going to shock you. We have the Shocker. No pun intended, the Shocker is actually shocking in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1. The character can only destroy metal, and what is so confusing is how we see the Shocker use electricity in a special move, yet he cannot use electricity to charge up electrical charges. Seriously, if it was not for LEGO Marvel 2, the Shocker would be so far down my list, as LEGO Marvel 2 gave him a really satisfying charge up attack Oh, the Shocker is just one of those Spider-Man villains that gets easily overlooked, and I like how in this game he can actually use his vibrational gauntlets to destroy walls, unlike the first one. At number 31, get ready for some carnage. Carnage in the LEGO Marvel games has always felt like the little brother to Venom. For starters, he cannot transform big like Venom, and the only thing special about him is that his webs are red. Carnage does not even have a prominent role in the story. In LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1, you see him for like a split second, and then in LEGO Marvel 2, he just morphs into Carnage. Carnage? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Carnage. Would you like a bottle of milk? Yes. And I forgot to mention, they didn't even give Carnage a charge-up attack. Venom has one. Swinging into number 30, we have Silk, and what I appreciate about Silk is how she is completely different to all of the other Spider-Verse characters. She is one of the only few Spider-Man characters to not wear a mask, and I love how her logo is literally a full-on spider web, which you do not see very often. And if you did not know, Silk was bitten by the exact same spider that bit Peter Parker, meaning whenever they get near each other, they get that spider tingle for each other. If you know what I mean. In the number 29th spot, here is Craven the Hunter in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes, and he is a straight-up copy and paste of Loki with Spider-Man's abilities added on. I can definitely say Craven has evolved, because in LEGO Marvel 2, he is so fun bashing enemies from side to side. Maybe if he could pull out his pet lion, I might have placed him a little higher, because I really enjoy using Craven. He is good fun. Hiya, Carnage. Do you mind if I use a bit of your milk? No. Come on, help a brother out. I am trying to lure out Black Cat. Who is at number 28? Now, Black Cat is pretty much near identical to Craven, even in the first LEGO Marvel game, though she does not have a spear. And in the second one, she is the exact same, but she can at least swing around unlike Craven. And listen to how satisfying it sounds. Oh, Spider Woman, Spider Woman. She is at number 27. As much as Spider Woman is amazing in terms terms of her abilities, she is kind of like an electrical Captain Marvel. Her appearance really does not do it for me. It reminds me of Spider-Girl, but obviously done a lot better, and I still do not understand why she is called Spider-Woman when nothing on her outfit resembles a spider, and this is the exact same with her abilities. Homer Simpson once said, Spider-Pig, Spider-Pig, at number 26, meet Spider-Ham, and he is pretty pricey. You best bring home the bacon, as to unlock him, you need five. 500,000 studs. Unfortunately, he does play the exact same as all the other Spider-Men, but TT Games knocked it out the park here with his design, from his belly to the printing on his head. Who doesn't love Peter Parker? I just wish they changed his animations to suit the character more. I mean, he is a pig, and shouldn't he have small legs thinking about it? In the 25th spot, I've got to say, this is something else. Da -da 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 -da. Symbiote Spider-Man hasn't changed all too much in the LEGO Marvel games. The simplicity of the black suit has always appealed to me. They knew people wanted this variation as it was originally DLC in the first game. I have got to say, maybe if they gave this variation super strength or something to portray the symbiote a little more, like a unique special move, I would have probably placed this a hell of a lot higher as it is just a simple variation, but it is super sleek and we all love it. Number 24, Venom 2099. Unlike Carnage, 
which Venom 2099 isn't just a simple reskin of the iconic character. Instead of firing webs all around him, he spews out an aura of toxic gas, which I really appreciate. This is how you do a variation. My only wish is that his eyes were more like flames like in the comics, and did you know Venom 2099 in early concepts actually looked like a xenomorph? Don't tell me. Wait till you get to my age. I don't want to hear it. At 23 is the Vulture. The Vulture is very basic. He has wings and a gun. Not the most interesting Spider-Man villain, but Lego Marvel 2 gave him some much needed spotlight. His animations are just pure hilarious and he comes with gravity bombs which need nerfing. How brutal is this special move, bro? Chill. As much as I like the film version of the Vulture, the classic just has that comedic flair. However, all of the other Spider-Man villains just have that edge above him, so he cannot really go any higher. For number 22, I would offer to lend this next character a hand, but then Bro turns into a giant lizard, so nah. This LEGO game transformation is S tier, that is why I have the lizard so high up on the list for just a simple big fig character. He did improve in LEGO Marvel 2, but then they got rid of Kurt Connors altogether, meaning no transformation. So was it really an improvement? Also, hello, hello, hello there guys, I am Rugged Eagle, and if you love LEGO games, why not subscribe? I talk about all things LEGO games. And a like would be so appreciated if you have gone to enjoy, and why not join our Discord server? Anyway, let's get back to it. Number 21, Rhino. There is no character better than Rhino at causing a rampage in New York City, and you may not know this, but when Rhino runs into cars, they instantly blow up. Same goes for his charge ability. His special move always puts a smile on my face. Watching henchmen get launched up into heaven to see Uncle Ben is just hilarious. <laughs> and I've got to be honest, before making this video, I haven't played Rhino in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes in years, and I forgot just how great he is. Seriously, go back and play Rhino. Moving into the top 20, at number 20, we have Goblin 2099. Now, you will see that Green Goblin is quite high on my list, and the only real difference between them is that Goblin 2099 has electrical grenades. And obviously, he uses wings, not a glider, and the only reason why he is not up there with Green Goblin is I am not a major fan on this appearance. It is definitely better than Green Goblin Ultimate. Next up at number 19, I fell into a tank of electric eels. It's Electro, do not forget his name. The Electro boss fight in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes really doesn't do the guy any justice, but when you unlock him, he is pretty insane, being able to wipe out a room of enemies instantly. And the classic Electro design is one of my all-time favourites. That is what makes him so great. And did you know that they gave him Joker's special move from LEGO Batman 2? That has to be extra style points. His slam attack is the exact same as Doctor Doom's, but it works so well, knocking enemies far away. And I love his glider in the first game. I kind of wish they kept it for the second. At number 18, I had to place him somewhere. It's Spider-Man himself. And there is three total variations of the regular Spider-Man outfit. You have the classic Tom Holland suit and Lego Marvel 2 suit. And I would love for you guys to rank these three from worst to best in the comments below. My favourite of the three has to be the classic. I love the big tick. You can't say that's a spider. Cue the music, aren't me. It's time to go back to the 1930s. Number 17, Spider-Man Noir. I have such a gigantic soft spot for Spider-Man Noir. Blame Shattered Dimensions for that. Spider-Man with guns dressed in black leather will never not be awesome. And I love this variation so much especially when he goes, it's Hanoon. In the 16th spot is a character who is always negative. It's Mr. Negative. <laughs> Mr. Negative has such a standout design. Whether it's Lego Marvel or Spider-Man PS4, he is just so satisfying to use. One, the sound design here is pure gorgeous. And two, the particles given off from his abilities look so cool and different. The only thing that really pulls Mr. Negative down is his lack of mobility. He can 
cannot super jump nor fly, and he is DLC. Number 15, Scorpion. Scorpion has only appeared in LEGO Marvel 2, and he is a Spider-Man villain who often gets overlooked, but TT Games gave him a chance. From the way he crawls towards enemies while attacking them, which is so creepy, but it does suit the character really well, and granted, he does look a little stupid super jumping around the open world, but at least he has that extra mobility over Mr. Negative. I have got to say, I have never felt more powerful with a beam than when playing as Scorpion. You can feel the power all thanks to the sound design, and they animated his tailpiece really well, keeping it true to Lego. At number 14, what happens when Venom mixes with Flash Thompson? This is Agent Venom, one of the coolest Lego Marvel characters out there, having the ability to wield four guns at once with the hold of a button. Lego Marvel 2 introduced me to this character, and he is seriously awesome. His rifle is great for claiming out enemies with a rapid fire rate, and the chess mold used on him is beautifully integrated into the character. Is this even an official Lego mold? But there is a bit of a problem with Agent Venom, and that is when you are swinging upside down. When you fire, you fire a bullet out of your hand. It's really weird. In the 13th spot, do not call his work Barth. It's Mysterio. Mysterio has always been one of the best characters. He has telekinesis, mind control, a heat beam, not to forget invisibility, and a beautiful design. Only he can pull off a decorative fishbowl. But my biggest gripe with Mysterio is how he can never fly. If they let him fly around in fog like Voldemort in LEGO Dimensions, he would be so much better. As mobility is massive in LEGO games, do you or do you not always pick a flying character? Next up at number 12 is someone who is miles better. LEGO Miles Morales first entered the scene in LEGO Marvel Avengers as DLC, reappearing once again in Marvel 2 with his electrical powers, but as cool as that special move is, I still prefer Marvel Avengers' take on him. The backflip to enter invisibility is so smooth, and he can transform back to his regular self in this game. With Miles having quite a few extra abilities compared to the other Spider-Men, I do see myself picking Miles quite a lot, as I do love him as a character, but there are a few who are a bit better, such as number 11, Superior Spider-Man, and he surely is superior, with a lot of abilities like Super Strength Repair and his own special move, which goes a little bit like this, because I'm gonna swing from the chandelier, <laughs> oh, I love doing this. Anyway, I totally forgot that Superior Spider-Man was in LEGO Marvel 1. Man, the arms here are definitely outdated. Alongside Superior Spider-Man, I'm gonna put Lady Spider on here too, because she's pretty much an exact copy, and I do think I prefer her design a little bit more. In the number 10th spot, I never thought I was ever going to say this, but it's Morbin time. Here is Morbius, and he is a walking joke these days, but in LEGO Marvel 2, the dude can freeze time, mind control, track things, use super strength, technology, dig stuff up. Morbius is seriously not far from Stan Lee in terms of abilities, I just think his design is very cheesy and a little bit weak, letting him down, but surprisingly, Morbius is at number 10, and I think he's deserving of that because of his abilities. Will he ever have the power of the sun in the palm of his hands? Probably not. Number 9, Dr. Octopus. Dr. Octopus in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes is one of the most unique LEGO game characters. With his giant arms, I just hate how he has to slap every enemy he comes across. It gets so annoying. Stop. And then LEGO Marvel 2 made him even better, giving him a super jump and a fast charge up attack purely on how different Doc Ock is. I thought he was deserving of the number 9 spot. He feels like a mixture of Spider-Man and a big character, letting him have the best of both worlds. At number 8, do you wanna build a sandcastle? Sandman is a personal favourite of mine. I mean, you've gotta love the sandcastle, the way he seamlessly transforms into a cannon, and his special move is literally the best of them all. I just love how the developers made a nod to the scene from Spider-Man 3, then it goes into pure comedy geniusness. Being to be completely honest, I ain't a massive fan of his redesign in LEGO Marvel 2, and his special move replacing the sandcastle, come on! 
You cannot replace the sandcastle. At number seven, meet Gwen Stacy or Spider Gwen. And did you know she is the only web slinging character outside of Venom to have totally unique animations? I just find it so funny how she just attacks enemies with her pink drumsticks. And if you are wondering, yeah, she can play the drums, which works as a sonar ability. Oh, look at them. I think TT captured Spider Gwen perfectly here. And you can see they put a lot of care into her. Swooping into the number six spot at Godspeed Spider-Man is Hobgoblin and at number five is Green Goblin. Green Goblin has always been a top tier character with his instant killing pumpkin bombs to his glider which sends cars absolutely flying and you can bounce enemies up and down on the glider. Now Hobgoblin is nearly identical. They are a few noticeable changes but I think Green Goblin should go above as he has appeared in both of the games and he's mega good in both of them. And just before we go any further, if you have gone to enjoy today's video, a like would be so appreciated as it took so long to make and thank you guys so much for the support. Anyway, let's get back to it. Making his way just outside of the top three at number four, meet Carnum, a completely original character made for Lego Marvel 2 and Carnum is gross but I love it from his giant pink tongue to his tentacles that wiggle out of his chest and let's not forget about how he dissolves enemies inside of his stomach and then spits them back out. TT Games went above and beyond on Carnum, and how did they make web slinging feel so smooth with a big character? Number three, Spider-Man 2099. Did somebody say canon event? What makes Spider-Man 2099 so good is how he has the ability to glide after web slinging. It is seriously a game changer, especially when you pair this with all of his abilities because he does have a lot more than your average web slinger. He really has it all, even to his design. Has any other Spider-Man got a cape? No. Number two, Iron Spider. Iron Spider is a combination of Iron Man and Spider-Man and it makes it a little unfair for all the other web slingers because he is obviously going to be the best Spider-Man. The dude's got rockets, a heat beam and then all of Spider-Man's abilities. This is the only reason why he is at number two because as much as I like his design, I think we have seen miles better. We have now been through 44 different Spider-Man characters and it doesn't take a genius to know who is missing. At number one is Venom. Lego Venom was my childhood. I remember transforming into Big Venom for the first time, being absolutely amazed, and then they spoiled us in Lego Marvel 2. Big Venom in that game is pretty much Carnum. He may not have the abilities of Iron Spider, but the animations on Venom are so beautifully done. I don't think I need to explain any further. Yeah, Venom is the best, and just because before you go, why not check out 50 things that don't make sense in the Lego Marvel games? Some of them will shock you. Anyway, have a good day, guys, and I'll see you in a bit. Adios.